Yeah, that damage is pretty nuts, isn't it? Hey, it's Dan, and welcome back to Unified Gaming. Now, in this one, I want to go through and show you how to play Shadow Mark II. If you're unaware, Shadow Mark II is a PvP sniper build that is designed to have stupid damage with just absolutely nuts sustain. There is a video on the channel with the build, so if you are curious, do go and check that out. As with this one, we're going to go through and I'm going to break down how do you play this build well. What am I thinking? What am I doing? Does it work? Does it not work? And you can kind of learn some tips and some tricks and some tactics that you could apply yourself to do just as well. And if you are one of those people thinking, is this, you know, the best clip he's chosen? The answer is no. This is a typical BG that I have. You can check us out on Twitch. We do this every Saturday, so you can see it live. And you can just see this does really, really well if you play it well. So I'm going to break it down in this one all for you so you can sit back, relax and enjoy it. And if you are liking the video in that process, then do leave a like. It really, really helps. It helps YouTube. It tells YouTube that I'm a better YouTuber. It gets us more views. It's honestly a win-win. So do do that if you can. And leave a comment. Let us know what you think of the video. Is it good? Is it bad? And if it's bad, then tell me. I can't fix it if I don't know what's wrong with it. And for all those patrons out there, I just want to say a huge, huge thank you for your support. Like, your support lets me make these videos, so it's really, really appreciated. If you want to join those Patreons and they help me make videos, gain access to videos early, that ad free, get help with me from Discord and stuff, then do consider donating on Patreon. There's a link in the description. But with that said, let's just get into it. So we spawn into a BG, and what I do is I always buff up. Now, when I get here, you want to kind of always be near obstacles. It's kind of a useful thing. Anything that you can kind of retreat to. I've got a pillar here, I've got a ramp down here. Either of those are really, really good oh no buttons. Kind of, if you get anywhere nearby, you can just escape the line of sight, get in cloak. Equally, they give you kind of good tactical advantage as well, that you kind of take no damage from this side because you can't be targeted, whether you're in sneak or not. You can see there's three red people in front of me. One, two, three. Now, if I target number one, this one at the front, the issue is that, you know, he's probably going to come forward and get in the way, and I won't get the kill on this person here. So this is pointless. This purple over here, he's in misform, so it's pointless attacking him. This red over here, this middle one, he's not worth attacking. He's moving forward. I'm gonna get kind of, I'm gonna hit one of those two, probably hit him and then hit him or hit him and hit him. It's not gonna work well. So in this situation, I'd always recommend going for the person who's furthest away. You know, the person who's furthest away or the lowest health is a really good tactic to pick. Someone you can either nuke instantly or somebody that is kind of really far away. And this is something that's really worth doing. So this person over here, we're going to go straight for him. I'm getting stealth, vampire toggle. They move away now, furthest person away. So I really changed my position. You know, he rushed forward, furthest person away. Get ready for my combo. Snipe, snipe, blood attack, poison injection, and he's dead. And now I see that he's been attacked by these people here. And these have not buffed up in quite some time. So I know I could probably attack them and the buffs will fall off any moment now, meaning I'm going to hit them really, really hard and probably get a few kills. This one's easier to hit. He's closer. He's not behind an obstacle. So I'm going to go for this person here. Snipe. Snipe. He's dead. Now, my teammates died here. So you can see he's died here, but this red is fighting the purple that's over here. This means that he's going to basically not pay attention and he's going to be an easy kill if we focus him quickly. Our stamina is at 15k though, and our magic is at 4,700. I have my potion ready though, so this is always good. If your potion's ready and you've got about half resource, you can keep going. If my potion's less, you know, it's not ready or I'm on half resource, I'm gonna die. So I know I can probably attack this person here. Go for cloak, go for the snipe. He gets around the pillar. I pop my potion though because I now take some damage. If you notice, my buffs are still on, so I still keep my rally on. It's about to go off in a moment. Go for the snipe. I get hit here really hard, and I should have died. So you'll see, you know, I survive. I roll dodge, cloak, get through the spit, get rally, cloak, and get in stealth quickly. Maybe we'll go back just a few moments. As you kind of, why didn't I die? It's all from over here. Four seconds, okay? 
So just look at the damage that I take in a second, okay? You ready? So no damage. But I'll take loads of damage here. So I'm down to 12k health. I take literally 40% damage instantly. I'm gonna die at any moment. My rally goes off 8,600 heal because I was in stealth and it's a guaranteed crit. That little heal there, because I kept my rally on, I stayed alive. You know, that is so, so important. The amount of times I see people use forward momentum and they die because they don't have a burst still. Rally is vastly better, as I've said already, but keep the buffs on is kind of the big moral of the story here. Your rally's bonus damage, it's bonus sustain, and it's a big heal should you need it, which we did. When we break free, you all, like you always want to roll dodge. Most skills in this game are single target, which means they can only hit you if they're looking at you and you're not like roll dodging. So we can roll dodge most of the stuff in the game. Things like ultimates are generally AoE and some executes are AoE, like you know, dual wield stuff. But typically you can roll dodge most things, which is why it's really good. You kind of just roll dodge when you're low health. This is a ranged caster hitting us. You can tell by the you know the fireballs coming in and stuff. So if we roll dodge, I'm gonna dodge all of those attacks. I'm gonna dodge this guy's executioner if he came up. So there's my roll dodge. You notice what literally dodge dodge, you'll see it here with that mouse is. Dodge dodge. That there was enough to keep me alive. So I avoided those two kind of hits, which which I would have died. So that roll dodge was the right call. I could dodge again and I push cloak straight away. I get into sneak, which you can see I'm sneaking here. This sorcerer does pull me out of his um, with his bounder storm. So what I then do is I cast my rally, even though it's been on for a few seconds, it's still a nice little hill. It's not massive, but it's just enough to maybe survive a light attack. And I get into cloak. Now that I'm in cloak, I just wait down here and use rally again just to get my health up a tiny bit. I try to go for the kill and, you know, I'm being a bit greedy. I probably should heal up more, but I know this guy's kind of let his buffs drop. Now, you probably notice why didn't I get the kill? Um, if you're somebody who's not aware, I actually ride a motorbike and there is kind of a link here, so do sort of <laughs> stick with it, okay? When you do your motorbike training, one of the things they say is to commit. So when you look left, you look right, you look over your shoulder, you find spots, and you just go forward. You don't look a second time to the left or the right and redo all those looks. You kind of have to commit to going forward. And this is exactly the same. You know, I come up here, a cloak, I'm going to commit. My stamina is low. I have no potion, but my ultimate is ready. So I know if I get this snipe and this ultimate, this guy is dead. Instant death. So I'm trying to move towards him as I do my snipe. So I'm committing for this kill. Snipe. Go for the in cap. Target's out of range. Literally, really, literally is just out of range. So unfortunately that didn't work. If you do commit and things do go south, your best friend is line of sight. You know, is there no one else did a video recently kind of showing how busted proc sets were and he called it like tactical sort of retreating or tactical repositioning and it's exactly that move to a better position stay alive if you're dead you have no dps but like it happens in pve and pvp is the same a dead you know damage dealer is pointless so we're going to move over here get to the you know pillar of safety any pillar any tree any rock will be your best friend whether it's cyrodiil whether it's battlegrounds even the imperial city anything that you can hug basically so be a tree hugger be a wall hugger all that stuff really really helps i see they go over there so i drop down and i'm just going to reset sometimes you need to go actually enough is enough my potion is not on you know it's not ready my stamina is too low i couldn't do any damage by resetting i've now got some resources ready just to kill these people here so if I just carried on attacking over there, these would have come behind us, and we would have died. So that was a good call to make. I see this person here, I go for my vampire toggle for the bonus damage. He's at 23k health. You know, the toggle will give us basically a guaranteed kill. Without the toggle, I might struggle. So I'm putting on 23, 24k health is fine. 25k, you definitely want the toggle. You know, 20k with the shield, you want the toggle on. So I'm gonna go for the kill, snipe. Snipe, blood attack, poison injection. If you notice our roll dodge at the end there, so I'm doing it once more. So you ready? Snipe, snipe, light attack, poison injection, then roll dodge. I do this on a controller very quick, just with practice. This is on PC EU, hence all the add-ons and stuff. So it's a bit easier if you play PC, just double push the key. But what this does is the animation cancels the poison injection, which shoots a little bit faster. The light attack and the poison injection land at the same time as the snipe. There you see, one, two, three, and the poison. So he literally takes, you know, nine, 
basically almost 12k damage. None of those are crits. So if they were crits, he would have taken significantly more. So it just shows you if you land snipe and poison injection with a light attack, it's lots of burst. So he's dead. I'm gonna go for this all here. Now watch my stamina because this is really, really important, okay? Potions ready. Loads of magic ready to kind of get out of jail, you know, with the cloak, you know, cloak to freedom type of thing. Go for the snipe, go for the snipe, go for the in cap, light attack, poison injection. I'm out of stamina. Now I use the potion or I just go for the light attack. By using the poison injection, I know he can't heal because he's got this nasty dot. He's got the poison status effect from snipe. He's got defile from snipe. So he's gonna find it really hard to bounce back, which means that I could just probably light attack him. There you go, dead. So I just go for light attack. Now I use my potion here. This is important, 6k stamina. He's low health with a shield. That shield is probably worth, based on kind of his max health, around about 8k. So he really has about 17, 18k health. You know, 6k stamina, 11k stamina, 12k stamina, 17k health now. Let's go for the snipe. He pulls me out of stealth with Balance Storms, so I don't get the crit. He goes for that shield, 10k health plus, you know, an 8k shield roughly, 18k health, 11k stamina. I don't have the resources to burst him. Break free, 4.6k stamina, 13k health. He's got two bits on him. Now I'm going to commit here, and this is a bad call. What I should have done is move away, you know, reposition, cloak, and just escape. But I'd commit, trying to go for the kill, and I die as a result. You know, I can't roll dodge. I take way too much damage, way too quick. You know, that's a nasty frag, 9k frag. <sighs> you know, that is a lot of damage. What I should have done, so we just rewind it just to give you some kind of ideas. When I attack him here, I should then look at my stamina stop. You know, I get hit with streak. I should roll dodge, go behind this pillar here, or to the side here. He's gonna have to 180 and look at me, which gives me enough time to roll dodge. I've got loads of magicka, so I should just cloak and cloak to freedom. I'd roll dodge and go forward to kind of this side of the pillar, but on the right side. So he kind of, he would have to go forward and then round and round to try and catch me, which he probably wouldn't. Or I'd just cloak and go forward and just jump off the edge. But I don't do any of that. And then I die as a result. Sometimes committing is exactly what you need to do but commit wisely if your potion's ready 100 commit if your potion's not ready you know you're going to be in a bad situation there's no kind of plan b always treat your potion as a kind of a get out of jail a plan b should you need it that's how i use it and that gives me the most success as for respawning i always buff up to so rally race against time to get back into the fight pop into sneak on the 2h bar because we get off the Axe is just crazy, crazy speed. We've got all our buffs here, so we can buff up before we attack. Sneak in our magic pull, regenerate stupidly quick. Now there's people fighting here, and you know, Sulk, red, red. The purples are fighting, you know, the reds. We've got an ally over here. I'm probably gonna go for the person here nearby. He's gonna go down, he's repositioned, he's low health. Now, when they're like this and they're at range, your best combo is snipe, light attack, poison injection. Snipe, light attack, poison injection. He dodges one, two, three. If they hit, he would die. If we landed those skills, he would be dead. So sometimes this just happens. What you want to do then is trying to close the distance. He's going this way, so I think he's going to go round. I'm going to cut the corner and try and get him around here. And unfortunately, he went backwards. You know, he did a really good call there. I tried cutting him off. He made a bad call now because he went back round to try and find me, and he you know he didn't heal himself. My potion's ready, I've got 11k stam, 12k nearly, so I could probably go for the attack here. But he has big, big shields. So don't be fooled by a small health bar. Shields can be, you know, your worst nightmare in this kind of build. Now I see him, I get pulled up by the Bound of Storm once again. That's happened way too often, but you know, it happens. Snipe, snipe, light attack poison injection. Now this I don't get, but if you play with a controller, it does happen quite often. So uh, he's tag tar uh, tab targeted. Now I like to attack, and for some reason it goes to the Atronach. <laughs> I don't know how that happens. So he does survive. I then go for the snipe. I'm low resource, so I'm gonna use my potion. 14k stam. I'm gonna go for the snipe into in cap combo. Snipe into in cap. He's almost dead. He does a really good job at roll dodging and moving over here. I land some of it, but he blocks, and you know the block doesn't 
it just doesn't get enough on him. He gets healed by his ally, he figures, I'm rolling now to avoid damage, because I've rolled, I have max stamina, you know, 5.8k, I can't break free. You know, CC break is very, very expensive in no CP. And I died because I was too aggressive. You know, that death there could have been 100% avoided. Sometimes you need to kind of cut your losses and just go, you know, don't pick those people. In this situation, there's three people here. I've got this guy tugged from previously, so I can see him. It's um, red, purple, purple, if I remember. I'm going to go for the cheeky kill here. You know, try and get the cheeky kill. And that's my kill there. Now it's purple, red, he's dead. In this situation, what you want to do is focus the person attacking the other person. So because they're not fighting together, he's basically just taking damage. He's in a roll dodge in the moment and escape. You know, that's a typical thing or heal or block and drop his stamina really quickly. This person's going to waste all of his damage resource, magicka or stamina, depending on his build, and he'll forget to maintain his buffs. This happens way too often because we were buffed up already before we came into the fight. I can go for the cheeky kill here. No, it's snipe into light attack poison injection. He's dead. This person now, like, what's happened? He turns around after line of sight in. I can go for the cheeky kill here as well. I take all three kills because I targeted the right people. Up here, this red is moving around. I know he's a bit tanky with his shields. So he's at 21k health, but a shield that's no 8k is at 28k health, 27k health. It's going to be hard to kill. So I need this vampire toggle because he's going to use it as soon as he gets up. So snipe. Snipe, poison ejection. Managed to get him before he got the shield on, but if he didn't get the sh but if he did get the shield on, then we would have struggled. But because we had the toggle on, we didn't. I noticed we're playing Chaos Ball, and I'm like, I haven't really helped. You know, Nightblades get a lot of flack for this. So if you are playing Chaos Ball, a high damage build can be incredibly valuable, as you see. We actually win this match because I actually start helping. You now my damage can stop the people from just winning the match. Here I'm going to focus the Templar, he's been holding it for the longest. The longer you hold this ball, the more debuffs you get, so your heals get less, your shields get less. Basically punishes magicka builds more than stamina. But I'm going to go for him anyway. No, 7.4k, he is incredibly tanky, he has lots of off healing from this guy here. But because he's got this on him, he can't heal quickly, he's like super super defile, he's like major major defile. So it's really cool, just make sure that you focus this person if they've had it for a while. Yep, so he's dead. I'm gonna, I'm kind of got you know, three coming towards me, plus an atro and a big pet in a moment. So what I need to do is get out of there. I roll dodge this way. There's my roll dodge, and get into stealth. Stealth is your best friend. Now he's tried to hit me, and because I went to stealth, his single target skill will be an instant miss always. So there's a miss. I'm gonna go up and get the skill. Um, light attack snipe. I hit the pet, which is annoying. I roll dodge. And I rolled it really, really, really far. <laughs> you know, that does happen. So I'm gonna go up, keep my buffs on, as you can see, move up. Now, I've got people fighting over here, people fighting over here. If you notice what I'm doing time and time again, which I haven't really kind of explained, but you know, if you're with it this far, this will really help, is always get behind the target. You now, a lot of the time I'm attacking from the side, the flank, basically. So they have to turn the camera to see me. That extra half second, one second rotation gives me time to get out of there if things go wrong. So I'm going for him, he's behind. He's almost dead. Okay, this person here is attacking. If you notice a Templar pop down as well. The big thing with a sniper is target selection. He could be squishy, he could be squishy. The way you do is you look at the health and look at the buffs. He's got his um, blazing shield on thing, so he's got the um, living dark, I think it's called. That means he's probably pre-buffed completely. This guy doesn't have bound and storm on, so he's not buffed up. He's gonna be a quick kill. Ready? Snipe. Open six k. Snipe again. Three gate health left. I'm gonna roll dodge. He managed to roll dodge it. I then go for the snipe into light stack. If you notice how much cross healing he's had. Like he's getting so much cross healing from his allies, which is going to make this hard to get the kill. So I'm just trying to keep the buffs on him, the debuffs and stuff with the poisons and all that stuff. This Templar here is really tanky. This Nightblade here, sorry, Sorcerer is tanky because of the shield. I'm out of stamina, so I just need to light attack basically because my team are here. I need to now get resources. You know, so I'm using Deep Thoughts. I'd highly recommend getting this if you don't have it. And then I'm just going to sit in stealth. 
reds are coming in purples are going to respawn i need to basically get some resources i'm going to die i do have my potion though so that does really really help this red here has got um the execute on him so he's gonna be an easy kill if we hit him he dodges loads of attacks so i'm just gonna say yeah stop this go back regroup get some resources you know when i was saying cut your losses do just that you might have missed this as well as i'm running and you know this might be because i ride a motorbike look in your peripheral vision over here purple you might not see it oh sorry that's red but he's going to come up here which means when i get up to my spawn there's going to be an enemy on my left this is really important so look, you can't see him now but i know he's over there i remembered he's there come up there he is go into snipe go for the in cap my teammate actually stuns him but because i was expecting to be there i could be buffed already which is why that really helped just kind of paying attention to your surroundings two purples on top of each other i want to go through them to get behind so i'm just going to kind of roll through get hit with a mad tinkerer so get behind them now i can hit the person from behind and hit really hard i do know that the other person is a warden and he has northern storm or permafrost i believe it's permafrost because i'm being like, i'm being snared badly which means he's got major protection 30 percent damage reduction i'm not going to nuke that no he's got 14k health probably an 8k shield so at least 22k and you know no cp and major protection you know he's not going to die quick he dodges loads of attacks as well managed to get some on him eventually as with our teammates i go for the in cap that was the only thing i had access to you know my stamina is empty i've got this ready so i might as well just use it 7.7k i need to get away so i'm going to um buff up try and get some damage on him just because there's three of us if this happens by the way and you're you know you're low resource but you have two or three with you you can just go really offensive you know this works really well your damage is so high that you know if you kind of get caught out they're going to find it hard to recover i get hit by a nightmare behind so i go into stealth instantly i also tap the sneak as well as soon as i tap cloak i typically tap the sneak because it procs the dalek bray i know that templar is the most tanky out of the lot so he's kind of you know, the person we've killed the most his level doesn't mean much his rank doesn't mean much but he's clearly experienced with how he's maintaining his buffs his heals he's blocking and moving well so he's gonna be the hardest one to kill out of all of these three here there's a few of us so we have a good chance to kill him quickly he roll dodged that he's just healing people he's gone for the cheeky um top and charge didn't quite kill him because he had lots of cross healing from allies he rolled dodged lots of damage you see when i say he's quite experienced i'm going for the in cap he held block so he's block casting the heal i know i can't kill him and um, because we couldn't kill him quickly i died no he's a very experienced player don't be fooled by their level now we're currently on 17 to 3 i'm thinking okay the purples seem to have a pretty good team two sorcerers hit really hard this templar with the gap close pulls me out of stealth i need to get rid of the sorks asap because the temple damage is quite low so i'm re-evaluating the situation always whether it's battlegrounds cyrodiil so i know kill the sorks quickly but if the templar's by himself we can try and get a cheeky kill he's by himself kill him quickly these sorks are going to drop really fast snipe into in gap in a moment dead go for this one here now go for my rally and go from a camo hunter you probably noticed the camo hunter was pulled here and you're probably going why most night blades in a low health cloak he didn't i was expecting him to cloak so just casting camo hunter when the low health means that i can pull him out of stealth and still hit him he hit me with cap in the end and the light attack killed him no i'm really low resource i'm just going for a cheeky deep thought to get some sustain back get to about half stamina and i'll wait here and i'll wait here and i'll wait here sitting just comfortably in stealth this sort is now going past the warden who's on our team you can probably guess what happens next go for the burst go for the burst he's almost dead i didn't quite finish him off and it's really hard to tell but just look at the bodies okay one two three atro over there these are going to come this way you know we've just taken the relic there's two sorcerers and a templar the templar can top lane charge me so i need to just stop attacking and sometimes you know just cut my losses this is one of those times roll dodge and getting cloak you know that is you know i'm gonna die if i say that of course purple's come down 
I would have died if I did that. This Templar's push forward. He's really experienced, even though his level might look a bit lower. So just don't take the level as kind of an indication of how good they're at PvP. And it's same for the rank. You know, all that says is you've played a lot, but at the end of the day, you can still be a bad player. So I'm going to buff up, get my Vampire Talk all ready. There it is. And I'm going to try and nuke him really quick. The snipe, the snipe. He rolled dodges incredibly well. He then block casts some of his um, things. So his heals. You notice that his damage, you know, isn't on us because we're hitting him really hard. Sometimes, you know, the best way to stay alive on a sniper is just to nuke somebody. So I'm going to go really offensive. My potion is ready, as you can see, and I've got an ultimate and I'm on top of him. So if I get sniped into incap, he's dead. This incap will stun him anyway. So, you know, I've got lots of good all no buttons here. Time by toggle, incap for the stun, poison ejection, I attack, and he's dead. My rally went off, so buff up with the rally, put on my race against time. That's minor force. Target this person here. I land one on him. And then when I land a snipe like this and they're really far like, away, cast cloak, it will force us to crit. They're 11.2k, so 11,000 crit in no TP. That's pretty, pretty nasty. That sorcerer is dead. I then move around. Purple, purple. This sorcerer is here. I make a really bad call here. You can probably hear it. <laughs> it sounds really painful. We've got my stamina. It's low. It goes from being low to like non-existent. No, I'm, I, I can't cast any skills. You know, I'm spamming light attacks. You know, I would die here if, you know, I got stunned. I've managed to roll dodge. So I'll just go back a tiny bit. So you'll see here, I roll dodge backwards when I get some stamina back. There's my roll dodge. Get behind the pillar and get down the ramp. Get away from that situation. My magic is high enough to cloak. So there's the go goes the rally. Move down here. Sometimes race against time could be better. So these are quite you know slow classes. They're fighting somebody else. So actually being invisible is going to make no difference. Just actually getting more distance is sometimes more useful. And that race against time is a really good good way of doing this. Then I cloak. Now it's two v two. This warden's quite tanky on our team, but his damage is a bit low. I have crazy, crazy damage, but my armor is like non-existent. So I know 2v2, we should win this if he works with me and we focus the same targets. I might not be able to nuke them because I'm low stamina, but I should be able to do enough damage to free him to get a kill and force one of them off us. So there's one snipe. He then runs off, as you can see. Look, he's leaving now because he's like, yeah, sod this. This now means it's 2v1 because his mate runs over there in stealth. And then this just gives him some time to get you know some damage into him. We kill him. His Nightblade mate disappears, runs away. We then get the Relic, you know, sorry, the Chaos Ball, very fortunately. I then get some resources back. Now my potion's ready, so I'm just gonna run around. Purple, he's that Templar, he reacts very fast, so I need my all my damage, basically. Vampire Doggle, going for the Snipe, Blood Stat Poison Ejection. If you notice, I did it differently this time. So sometimes you need to kind of read the situation and go, he reacts and breaks free from the first snipe. So doing snipe, snipe, I'm not going to land it. So I went snipe, poison injection with the light attack, then light attack, poison injection again. And there's a second hit, and that killed him. So he went to CC break and roll, but doing it slightly that differently, you know, snipe, light attack, poison injection, then light attack, poison injection. It's just a little bit quicker damage wise, but with, so you get slightly less damage, but it's faster. Snipe into in cap, light attack, poison injection, he's dead. This person over here is quite squishy. Potion's ready. Got Vampire Toggle on, so I can go and nuke him. So I've got crazy damage right now. There you go. He's, you know, he's dead. When it's TV1, we should never lose. This uh, Templar comes back, so just go for the Light Attack Poison Injection. The reason you do this is his low health. You know, if they're low health, Light Attack travels quicker than Snipe, so does Poison Injection. They're also cheaper. There's no cast time. You can actually do that and roll dodge, and it just lands instantly. So, you know, that's what I do quite often. Our teammate's being attacked now. So I'm going to go for the person at the back. He runs away. So I go for the Night Blade instead. He's dead. Go for Cloak into Snipe. He's dead as well, even before he falls off. It's now purple here. So there's one, two, three, and a pet. As we said earlier, it's remembering the targets and looking at the health bars to see what can I nuke and have the most impact on. 
21k, 20k, the sorcerers are the best bets to go for. The shields are off, they're attacking the targets. I'm going to go for this one here. He's low level, which means he could be inexperienced. Not always, but he could be. So we we'll go for the snipe. He dodges a few things. Go for the in cap. Now he's low health. And then what I end up doing is I change targets mid fight. So that's something that you need to do that sometimes. Just go look. I'm going to put some damage into this one here. Leave him now because he's low health and he's going to roll dodge and escape. He's going to run because he's getting low health too. And he's going to streak away from this person here. So I'm going to try and finish him as he runs away. Yep, he gets stunned and he's dead. And we go for his assault mate at the back. So again, he's got lots of health. He's got big shields. My stamina got low. And I noticed the ball respawned. So I'm going to buff up. Even though I'm low stamina, vampire type ball. We cannot let them pick up this ball. So it's 400 against 380. So snipe. Into poison ejection light attack. There he is, he's dead. The Templar's there. My stamina's low, but my potion's ready. So you can guess what's going to come next. Snipe into light attack poison injection, and he's pretty much dead. Again, as I said earlier, change your combo. Snipe, light attack poison injection, light attack poison injection. It is different to go and snipe, snipe, light attack poison injection. You have less burst, but the damage is much, much faster on the target. So just mixing up the kind of combo you do can have a big, big difference in getting the kill or not. And, you know, because I did that, he dies as a result. Our assault kills the Nightblade. We've got obviously a purple here. So I'm going to go for him. He's low health, but with a big shield. So he's probably about 24k health. I might need the Vampire Double, but my ultimate is ready. And I have, you know, a good amount of resource, 12k. I can commit. Snipe, into Wing Cap, Light Attack Poison Injection, one shot kill. You know, that's about 25k health roughly, instantly dead. Up here, you've got two purples. He's not attacking, you know, our ally, sorry. And he's got um, no buffs on, no shields. So he's going to be an easy kill. So snipe into light attack poison injection. Now he's low health, he's put his shields on. So I'm going to stop attacking and just go for some heavy attacks with some snipes. I then hit cloak. And the reason I hit cloak here, which is hard to tell, but watch the red pattern down here. As I'm attacking him, I'm just looking above to see, look, red over there. There's a red there. These are going to chase our relic, you know, the Chaos Ball, because they want to win. It's really close. So snipe, quick, and okay, look. He's not attacked him yet, which means he's looking for me. I need to get in stealth. If, you know, my stamina is empty. If I'm stunned, I'm dead. If I'm snared, I'm dead. If I'm attacked, I'm dead. So I just need to go sod this, get in stealth. Cloak is your best friend. Cloak, so you can see he starts to cast his animation of the ambush to gap close to me, but because I was... Like expecting that kind of play, I was one step ahead, use cloak. This is the biggest thing you need to do on a sniper, is think kind of one step ahead. Don't be somebody sitting going, you know, oh, let's react to the situation. Try and almost have a plan going forward so that if things don't work, you kind of got a plan to kind of overcome them. And that's what I do often with a sniper, is I always think about what is plan B. This person here is low health, his shield's about to run off, and then he's dead. I then push up here. I get hit with a snipe. So, you know, um, Venom Arrow is very little damage, but that means someone's behind me. So just be aware of that. Look over here. Our Templar friend is back attacking this person. He's got no buffs on. He's going to be a quick kill. So, you know, help confirm the kill. Go for the snipe. Light attack poison injection, and he's dead. We're on 419 now. And I'm going to go for the person that tried to attack us, but the match is over. So we turn around what is basically a loss into a win. And all of that was because we changed how we played throughout the match. You now I went from being you know, Rambo trying to solo it to actually defending the relic, helping our team win. And by also doing that and picking the targets correctly, I could stop people attacking our teammates who held the relic. So sometimes a high damage sniper or just high damage build can be incredibly valuable in like battlegrounds for team deathmatch, chaos ball, capture the relic when you're with somebody else or a group. But that's kind of how I play Shadow. A lot of it, which you can probably tell, and it's always hard to say as you're doing it, is just move, move, and move. You know, if we just take little snippets, you know, I'm moving, I'm doing my damage, and I reposition. I move away now, over here, kill him, do some damage, and I'm moving around. I'm never sitting still. I'm always rotating, always twisting, always turning to avoid the damage. 
and just chucking in some light attacks where possible because of the leech and strikes gives us sustain back and then at other times you have to cut your losses and just regenerate get resources back over here you'll see we're moving again constantly the more you move on a build like this the better you'll do there's a reason we have the wild hunt ring because we move quickly there's a reason i use race against time so so often and that is the biggest thing i can say is when you're playing this build keep moving never sit in one spot the people that sit in one spot go way way quicker than those who move around a lot the people that you know select bad targets will die much quicker i know my limits on this build in no cp 25k health is going to be harder to kill than 20k health so i need the vampire toggle one 30k health is pointless i'm not going to kill it with a you know a snipe snipe poison injection combo i need three snipes at least with this build so i'm not going to attack 30k health unless they're in combat already or unless i can catch them off guard so you just have to pick the target right and kind of be that one step ahead read the health bar how much damage do you need if you need more put on vampire toggle if you don't need more you've got enough burst because they're 20k health nuke them quickly and then the biggest thing as you can see in this is change your combo you know be reactive to the situation if you're doing snipe snipe light attack poison injection and that's not killing people because the cc breaking too quickly you want to do snipe light attack poison injection light attack poison injection just by changing it like that it's such a small like, minor thing will get you more kills and that's what the night is about it's about being reactive to the situation whilst having a plan going forward I'd also highly recommend keeping potions and keeping like a plan B in your back pocket. Should something go south, you've got a way out of there. Whether it's potion and cloak, whether it's roll dodge and potion, whether it's roll dodge and rally, whether it's just get out of there and reposition, you know, tactically retreating, tactically repositioning makes a big, big difference. But that's how I play Shadow. I know it's a lot of information there, so feel free to go back, rewatch it, digest it. And I'd love to know what you think. You know, are these types of videos useful? If so, then do leave a like and do let me know in the comments. And equally, if you go, actually, I didn't like this style of video, then do let me know. I can't improve it if I don't know. And for all of those people who do support us on Patreon, I just want to say a massive thank you for your support. It is really, really appreciated. And if you want to support us, support myself and get access to the videos early that are ad free, have help in Discord where I can help you with builds and stuff, then do consider donating. There's a link in the description. But with that said, guys, I'm just going to wrap this one up here. So thanks for watching. Take care and bye.